today we are going to discuss about a new chapter in physics which is thermodynamics the word thermo means thermal energy that is heat thermo means it is related to heat energy dynamics means the study of motion so the thermodynamics has a word has the meaning of thermal energy in motion or the transfer of heat energy from one system to another system or from one body to another body in this chapter we are going to discuss some of the main topics or main points about the heat transformation and its consequences in the system and surrounding so we can say that thermodynamics is the branch of physics that deals with concept of heat and temperature of a system and also it is related to the interconversion of interconversion of heat and other forms of energy that is we can transform heat into another that is mainly we can say that we convert heat into work and this work done is used for another purposes that is the interconversion of heat into another forms of energy is called thermodynamics and we know that there are two types of studies that is macro and micro in thermodynamics we are dealing with the macroscopic science macroscopic science means macro means something which is large or it is not to the molecular levels but it is it deals with bulk systems that means system as a whole thermodynamics is a macroscopic science and it deals with bulk system and we do not go into the molecular constitution of matter we are not dealing with the molecular or molecules or atoms and the dynamics of that small systems but we are dealing with the system as a whole for the study of the macroscopic system we already know that there are two systems that is system and the surrounding and we can say that the state of phase system is described by macroscopic variables what is mean by macroscopic variable macroscopic variable are the variable which describe the state of a system for example consider a system which is consisting of air and we know that the macroscopic variable of this system is can be defined as the pressure of the system at that moment which is represented by the letter p and volume of phase of the system represented by capital v then temperature of the system capital t then the mass of the system capital m and also deals with the composition of the system that is these are the macroscopic variable and we know that these variables are describes the, the system as a whole the system has only one pressure one volume one temperature and the total mass we do not consider the molecule of the system as individual systems but we considering the system has a whole so it is called the macroscopic variables and we also know that there are microscopic variables these are the position and position x and velocity these are the microscopic variable which means the position of each particle 
or each atom and velocity of each particle or each atom. Since we are dealing with the macroscopic science, we do not go deep into describe the position and velocity of each atom in the system. Instead, we only deal with the macroscopic variable, which means we describe the system using the macroscopic variable has a volt, which is a bulk system. It's the bulk system. So the bulk system has a pressure, has a volume, has a temperature, and a has mass m. Also, there are other macroscopic variables which we deal in later. Then going to the no next topic. It is not considered the motion of the system as a volt. The motion of the system is not considered. For example, consider a bullet fired from a gun. The bullet is the system. We know that after firing, the bullet has an kinetic energy of half mv square. And after hitting particular target, we know that the bullet is inside the matter and we are only dealing with the motion of the system or motion of the energy of the system after it is get into the target. That means the thermodynamics of the bullet fired from a gun does not deal about the whole system and its kinetic energy, but it proves or it provides the change of temperature and bullet of the surroundings. We know that after it hits the target, suddenly the velocity becomes zero and the whole energy is converted to, the whole kinetic energy is converted to heat energy. And we know that the surrounding of the bullet will get the heat energy and will have some changes. And that change or that change in energy or the interconversion of energy of the bullet is the main purpose of the thermodynamics. But the, the whole motion of the bullet is not considered here. This is the main difference between mechanics and thermodynamics. The mechanics deals with the firing of the bullet and it stops at the target. It only deals with from firing to after firing. But the thermodynamics deals with the energy change into heat energy. This is the main difference between mechanics and thermodynamics. Here, we are only dealing with the energy change. The next topic is about thermal equilibrium. We know that the term equilibrium in mechanics, in equilibrium in mechanics means zero net force or no force acting on a body is called equilibrium in mechanics but in thermodynamics we are having an another definition for equilibrium mainly in thermodynamics we are considering two things that is the system and the surroundings we know that the system has a specific macroscopic variables. They are pressure, volume, temperature, mass, etc. These are the state variables or macroscopic variables. That is, in thermodynamics, the term thermal equilibrium means the state variables, the state variables such as pressure, volume, temperature, mass, etc. do not change with time. Then we can say that the system is in thermal equilibrium or we can mainly it is the temperature. Mainly we can say that the temperature of the 
system and surrounding will not change with time we can say that the system is in thermal equilibrium with the surroundings now we are having two walls the system is separated by the surrounding by a wall of the container there are two types of walls they are adiabatic wall adiabatic wall and diathermic wall adiabatic wall and diathermic wall that means consider two system a and b we are separating a and b and it is composed of some gases consider it is some gases and if we place an adiabatic system between a and b there is no flow of heat between the system then we can say that the wall is adiabatic in nature that means for adiabatic wall there is no change of heat between the system that is if the system a is having 30 degree celsius and if it is having 50 degree celsius they are always constant in nature that, that is it will not change with time that is the that is they are not in thermal equilibrium but they are differently in equilibrium okay now we are changing the wall between a and b by a diathermic wall by a diathermic wall we can say that it is we, we already how this is at 50 degrees celsius and after removing the adiabatic wall and we are allowing heat to flow through the diathermic wall that means here it is a here we can see that there is flow of heat that is in diathermic wall there is a flow of heat from one system to another system that means if it is having 50 degree celsius and it is having 30 degree celsius the quantity of heat flows from higher temperature to lower temperature until it become equal that is after the, that is we, we are taking the average value then we can say that the system is at 40 degree celsius after attaining equilibrium that is after we are considering the diathermic wall between a and b the system is said to be in thermal the next topic is about zeroth law of thermodynamics in 1931 the scientist called r h fowler r h fowler formulated the law of thermodynamics which is called zeroth law of thermodynamics it is named after or it is stated after discovering the first and second law of thermodynamics and so it is the most important law considering the thermodynamics so it becomes the zeroth law of thermodynamics consider three system there are three system here a b and c the two system a and b are separated by an adiabatic wall this wall is the adiabatic wall and while the intermediate wall between c is it is diathermic wall it is diathermic wall the state of the system will change until both a and b come to thermal equilibrium with c we know that adiabatic wall doesn't conduct heat so a and b 
are not in equilibrium with each other but they can conduct heat between a and c because they are connected to diathermic wall so a and c will be in thermal equilibrium and b and c will be in thermal equilibrium separately this is the first case suppose that the adiabatic wall between a and b is replaced by a conducting wall and c is insulated from a and b by an adiabatic wall that is consider the figure b here it is reverse this is the adiabatic wall and this is the diathermic wall here the situation is here a and b are in equilibrium but there is no connection with a and c and b and c this observation forms the basis of the zeroth law of thermodynamics that means according to zeroth law of thermodynamics we can say that here in the first figure the a and b are separately in contact with the third system c so we can say that a is in thermal equilibrium with c and b is in thermal equilibrium with c and after this we can say that a and b are in thermal equilibrium with b when we remove the adiabatic wall and there is no exchange of heat between a and b that means it is found that the state of a and b change no further and they are found to be in thermal equilibrium with each other that is if a is in thermal equilibrium with c and b is thermal equilibrium with c then we can say that automatically a is in thermal equilibrium with c this is the case of zeroth law of thermodynamics and it states that two system in equilibrium with the third system separately are in equilibrium with each other so this is the zeroth law of thermodynamics and the quantity the zeroth law clearly suggests that when two systems a and b are in equilibrium that is that means in thermal equilibrium there must be a physical quantity that has the same value for both like that is here that quantity the thermodynamic variable whose value is equal for two system in thermal equilibrium is called temperature and we can say that in the first case temperature of a will be equal to temperature of c and temperature of b will be equal to temperature of c then we can say that temperature of a will be become equal to temperature of b this is the zeroth law of thermodynamics this implies that the system a and b are also in thermal equilibrium separately this is the zeroth law of thermodynamics the next topic is about thermodynamic system in thermodynamics we are mainly concerned about the system and surroundings or so we are dealing with system and surrounding so we are having different types of system in thermodynamics and they are there are three types of system the first one is open system the first one is open system in open system consider an open system consider this is a this is a vessel containing some atom or molecules for an open system we can say that the system is having some temperature some volume some number of particles for an open system the temperature there is an exchange of temperature between the system 
and we are having it is diathermic wall it is diathermic wall so it can exchange heat energy and the volume is constant and it can also exchange since it is open system there is an exchange of molecules between the system that is matter and energy the matter and energy can be transferred can be transferred between system and system and surrounding we can say that the system is a open system the system which can exchange or transfer matter and energy between the surrounding is called an open system here the temperature t of the system is a constant because it is having a same temperature as that of surrounding now we are going to the second system it is called closed system that means for closed system the system is closed but it is having a diathermic wall it is having diathermic wall but the system is closed so the temperature volume and number of particles are here but it can only exchange it can only exchange heat energy or energy and no exchange of matter there is possible here here also the temperature is a constant temperature is a constant and number of particle is also a constant here now the third system is isolated system the third system is the isolated system for isolated system the system is having some particles and the wall is surrounded by adiabatic wall the wall is comprises of adiabatic wall so there is no exchange of energy so here the energy number volume etc are constant there is no exchange of energy and matter energy and matter here when we can say some of the examples here that is for open system we can say that for example a cup of tea a cup of tea is an example of open system we can say that it, it will cool down after some time and it, it is also exchanging it is also exchanging particles with the surrounding for a closed system a heat pan is closed having a lid this closed system because it particles cannot escape from the system closed vessel a closed for example a closed vessel then for isolated system we can say that thermos flask we know that in thermos flask the quantity of energy will be conserved inside the flask there is no exchange of energy and matter is here in isolated system that is there are three types of system open system closed system and isolated system in thermodynamics